Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page guide on the top 200 drugs. So definitely a no-brainer, great refresher. Uh, Or if you're going through pharmacology classes, a great little resource to have. I am also working on finishing up uh, some free practice questions for uh, nursing pharmacology. So those will be available at reallifepharmacology.com uh, very soon if they aren't already uh, at the by the time I release this podcast episode. So uh, pay attention to that and uh, might be a little helpful uh, for some of you going through uh, board exams and pharmacology classes throughout your healthcare career. All right, with those announcements today, let's get into the drug of the day. So the drug, I guess I'd classify it more so as a supplement today, is thiamine. This is vitamin B1. And a little bit of background about thiamine. Uh, The situation that I see it used most in clinical practice are typically patients with alcohol use disorder. Excessive alcohol intake can lead to significant thiamine deficiency. Now, why is thiamine important? So mechanistically, thiamine is a cofactor in carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, If you remember uh, your cycle uh, in uh, organic chemistry and things like that, uh, it helps out with uh, the formation of ATP, which is a primary energy source for the body. So obviously, if we don't have thiamine, uh, that can definitely lead to some issues with that uh, production and certainly some, some complications, which I'll get into. So uses of thiamine, thiamine deficiency is pretty much the only situation that's going to be used in. Again, alcohol use disorder, most common. Uh, beriberi is uh, the technical or medical term for thiamine deficiency. Uh, Rarely, other than alcoholism, uh, I have heard of it playing a role uh, as far as being deficient uh, in patients who are pregnant, and particularly those with excessive nausea and vomiting, which makes sense. If we're not getting any dietary intake, uh, there is potential that we could end up running into thiamine deficiency because obviously most people don't need thiamine replacement because we get plenty of it in our uh, normal everyday diet. One other situation, um, I have not seen it personally used in this situation, uh, but it is reported in the literature. Uh, Ethylene glycol poisoning. Uh, If you remember, ethylene glycol is a uh, component of antifreeze. Uh, So that uh, thiamine can actually help convert that uh, to glycine, which is Uh, non-toxic substrate, basically. Uh, Other clinical quirks, uh, pearls with thiamine. So all the, pretty much all the B vitamins are uh, considered water-soluble. So that generally helps with our risk of not uh, excessively uh, supplementing and and getting toxicity uh, due to excessive supplementation because the kidney just basically pumps any extra out typically. Uh, Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend going and taking insanely high doses of thiamine, um, but we do have a little bit of a a safeguard there with the kidney and the the drug being uh, water-soluble. I want to get into the complications a little bit of thiamine deficiency. I think that's important. Um, the way I, I remember thiamine deficiency is uh, central nervous system stuff primarily, um, and it, it can bleed into uh, muscle control and things like that as well. So 
Uh, generally, uh, confusion and amnesia, if thiamine deficiency is severe enough, are going to be the uh, primary issues there. Uh, Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome is what you're going to be looking out for there. You've probably heard Wernicke's encephalopathy before. So again, that's going to be those central nervous system changes where we have uh, confusion and maybe lethargy, things of, of that nature that's going to affect our patient. And again, most common type of patient there uh, are is going to be our, our patients with alcohol issues. Administration, uh, thiamine can be given orally as well as injectable, IM or IV. Makes sense that we're probably going to give IM or IV if it's a really critically ill patient. And we're probably going to give oral if they aren't that critical or if we're doing uh, maintenance therapy to make sure their thiamine uh, levels stay up to par. Dosing on this um, for the maintenance treatment, uh, in most, that's most patients I work with, uh, 50 to 100 milligrams is probably the usual dosing range uh, that I see there once daily typically. Uh, just of note, the recommended dietary allowance uh, is 1.1 to 1.2 milligrams for adults, and that's females versus males respectively. But you can see that we're giving 50 to 100 times the dose basically uh, when we use supplementation. So uh, with that, I, I think that's an important distinction to note because it, it doesn't take usually a ton of uh, dietary thiamine to keep on a daily basis to keep those levels adequate. Uh, one exception um, might be patients with higher carbohydrate intake. Uh, they may need a little bit more thiamine, but generally patients that are eating a, a somewhat normal, well-balanced diet, um, they're going to get plenty of thiamine in their diet. And you can certainly take a look uh, at uh, you know food labels and things like that and see how much you're getting uh, in the, the food you're eating. Uh, but again, thiamine deficiency, generally not going to be an issue. Uh, except for patients that you know aren't eating a very good diet or aren't eating very well at all uh, in the case of uh, excessive nausea and vomiting or uh, and or alcoholism. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, polypharmacy and potentially taking patients off thiamine. This is a question I've been asked certainly in, in practice where um, you know, nurses, providers uh, are asking, hey, can we get rid of some medications? Can we get rid of s some supplements? And thiamine is one that I have targeted in, in the past. So if you've got a patient that's got a history of alcohol use disorder and they've been sober, eating well for 5, 10, 20 years, uh, that might be a patient where um, we could at least discuss that with the uh, provider that manage their um, addiction potentially if they're still accessible and that type of thing. Um, but generally, most patients that are eating well and you know not drinking alcohol anymore, it's probably not necessarily going to be needed uh, long term. So that's kind of one uh, target area I've looked at with thiamine. And I think it's at least uh, beneficial to ask the question and particularly in patients where they're uh, sick and tired of taking pills or maybe they've got multiple other disease states, um, it might be one thing that we can maybe uh, knock off their list and improve their quality of life a little bit there. All right, so there's one, uh, I think, important clinical pearl here that, that I wanted to mention in acutely ill patients. Uh, we need to give thiamine before we give um, glucose or, or dextrose, if you will. So uh, the deal is if we give dextrose first, IV dextrose first, for example, uh, we may actually worsen uh, the encephal encephalopathy type symptoms, those central nervous type symptoms of confusion and amnesia and things like that. So it can actually kind of exacerbate um, that thiamine deficiency and the symptoms that are arising from that deficiency. So again, malnourished patient, maybe they're presenting with thiamine deficiency, really, really important uh, to administer and give that thiamine first 
Because remember, like I said, thiamine is an important cofactor in carbohydrate metabolism. So if you give carbohydrates, your body might not have the thiamine cofactor uh, to help convert that into uh, the energy that is needed. So uh, definitely an important clinical pearl. Remember thiamine before dextrose, obviously, if a patient is thiamine deficient. Uh, a couple things on uh, kinetics that I, I wanted to mention. Uh, again, mention the, the multiple dosage forms, IV, IM, uh, oral, and in general, the bioavailability there is good um, for all forms of administration there. So uh, not too much for issues there. Uh, adverse drug reactions, adverse effects, uh, flushing, sweating, itching has been reported. Uh, probably more common, particularly the itching and uh, injection soreness, that type of thing, uh, is obviously going to be um, more common in the situation of where we're giving thiamine uh, via the IV or IM route. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study materials like NAPLEX, BCPS, and many others, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. If you're a nurse, we've got the MedEd 101 Guide to Nursing Pharmacology. I took the time, reached out to nursing professionals, uh, have taken nursing pharmacology courses before, and put this book together based upon uh, those experiences. So uh, go check that out on Amazon, uh, Meded 101 Guide to Nursing Pharmacology. All right, so wrapping up with drug interactions here. Uh, one really, really nice thing about thiamine is we really don't need to worry about drug interactions. Um, the one exception, which I, I discussed a little bit uh prior to the the uh, break here was that carbohydrate metabolism so if you get uh, excessive carbohydrate intake um, thiamine require requirements may go up a little bit there again the likelihood that this is impact this impacts anybody is pretty low um, but I did want to mention it just to um, have that out there so overall, no major drug interactions with thiamine. I mean, it's vitamin supplement, no binding interactions in the gut, anything like that, uh, that are going to have any clinical significance at all. So uh, pretty light load for you to memorize on the drug interaction uh, aspect today. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Hopefully you picked up a few clinical practice pearls. Uh, if you did leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening, that's greatly appreciated helps us grow the podcast, helps us grow the audience, and obviously educate more healthcare professionals about pharmacology. If you've got suggestions, comments, find me at mededucation101 at gmail.com. Feel free to shoot me an email. I do my best to respond to everybody. You can also track me down on LinkedIn and connect with me there, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. Don't forget to snag your free 31-page PDF at reallifepharmacology.com. And I am going to sign off for today, and I thank you so much for listening. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. There's a million things we have to do today, and worrying doesn't need to be one of them. That's why one in nine families use Life360 for safety, to connect to the people that matter most. Join today and get premium features that keep your family protected with real-time location updates, crash detection, and 24-7 roadside assistance. Because let's face it, you're more than just your to-do list, you're a family. So let's live life 360. Download for free today. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.